guess when we played the other tours that we've done after the first record came out it was kind of the same set every night Mm -hmm. you know and so this is nice because we played three texas shows um a couple weeks ago and you know played a different show every night some similarities but i don't know i just i just enjoyed it more it felt fresher and 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 people also recognize the first record too yeah yeah and so that's cool too it's that you have some familiar you know material that that people respond to but you know like old favorites because they've aged for three years right so that's cool too Every song, if you put the three Bedhead records with the two New Year records, or the three LPs, I guess, you know, any song that's on any of those records could be on any of the other records. And, it, you know, it's, it's all kind of, I think there's the same sort of variety on, on all the records, actually, and that they're not hugely different from one another in terms of their, their variedness. Except that, it, you know, it is nice when certain things do kind of thematically come together, sometimes mm-hmm. naturally, you know. Like, you could switch a few songs around here and there, but the way they are and the way they turned out is the way I like them, you know? Right, and I think lyrically there's... I mean, there's probably more difference lyrically among the records than there is musically, I would say. Or that there's more of a narrative arc if you look at at just the lyrics, you know, over the course of ten years or whatever, than there would be if you listen to the music. And sometimes that's just when you hit the magic sequence that that kind of reveals itself a little bit more. It may kind of be there, but then it just kind of pops out more.
form some kind of opinion to put it down on paper and they have to do it pretty quickly and they'll give like a cursory listen to a record and you know they seem to have like certain responses because certain responses that relate to past things you know they have some particular idea of what this next thing should be and we can't win because if it's like bedhead or whatever you know whatever we've done in the past you know people say oh it's the same kind of thing and if it's not like that people say well i wanted that so you know we can't win with people who are who are you know have a really hard and fast opinion about stuff and want things the way they want them you know and for the people who just like what we do i guess and want to hear more of it they seem to be pretty happy you know and that's really we we've been getting quite a few just unsolicited emails just out of nowhere people who just really love the new record and so it's been really nice necessity behind the band that we've assembled but it's it has more to do with with lifestyle we found people who can actually take you know two or three weeks off a year or four weeks or something and, and who have pretty loose schedules and so it's hard to find people like that in the same town even in the same big city I think that's plus these are also are you know really old friends I mean we've known all of these guys for at least We've known Mike for the shortest amount of time. We've known him for 10 years. 10 years, yeah. yeah. So. And we've known Josh for 20, Peter for 15, Chris for 10, 11. Um, but yeah, I think that has more to do with anything. It did, did, you know, we found people who can continue to do what we're doing in the kind of quirky way we do it.
family stuff. We've got so much we have to do, and and we never. I mean, neither one of us has that much time off to do that because we want to save the time off we have to play shows. So yeah. it's almost easier. It's a beautiful to... summer night, <laughs> <laughs> and you guys are in your van. <laughs> <laughs> we like it in here. Um, usually, uh, we, I mean, it makes more sense for us to spend the time on composition just, you know, by correspondence and everything, and then to maximize the time we have when we're in each other's physical presence on actually playing shows. Well, and then sometimes we just record those, you know, like we'll make a demo of right. something that we've been trading back and forth. Yeah, know? that is, that's true. That's something yeah. that we do. We actually try and finalize certain demos, which we later try to reproduce as authentically as we can in the studio. two records and now we have 65 minutes of music um, I mean we're, we're we have other songs that we just don't think are worth you know pursuing and we just let them go but but it is a struggle I think for us to come up with songs that we think are good enough to put on a record and so it, that's you know, that's partly why it takes us a long time to do it but that's also why these records are kind of short once we cross the 30 minute mark we're like <laughs> let's, make let's put it down on tape it can we can justify this as an LP, so we should put it down on tape and release it. And it, but if it were just, if thematically it didn't make any sense and it were 30 minutes long, we might reconsider. But I think necessity drives everything that we do. Or yeah, or just allowed time yeah. for certain things, like whatever time's left over in the day mm -hmm. after everything else is done. You know. Right. <laughs> take advantage of those just offers you can't refuse right. where it's all expenses paid you know that kind of stuff we do take advantage of that yeah, um, yeah you, can, you can look in the camera and repeat that for all the people listening yeah <laughs> if anyone wants yeah. to pay for everything well, I mean that's how we went to England um, we did that using the you know we did that during the week we played all tomorrow's parties and we may go over to Spain in three months because this festival's yeah. willing to pay for us so we want to play Japan. Yeah, if so. if anyone in Japan is watching this, yeah. we'll do it for plane tickets. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. We'll do anything for six grand. Too. Six grand. Yeah, that's our magic number. Yeah, for no whatever more, reason, no less. Six grand. Six grand works. Small show, six grand. Yeah. Huge show, six, six grand. grand. Yeah. It's like a flat tax, <laughs> which I don't agree with, but in this case, I think it's, it's the six grand, six grand band. <laughs>
trying to put together um, a record of songs that Bed had recorded. That um, they're, they're like two different categories of songs. Some are, well, I guess, they're all covers except for one song. Mm -hmm. And then the um, and and some of them were actually jazz covers that were going to be on this this record that we were and you know the process of making for a jazz label before it yeah. kind of went under and we split up so so we so might we're, tackle yeah, that we're trying to which will kind of be a pain logistically because all these songs are recorded on different tape machines with different size tape and everything. yeah but eventually we're going to put that together and that'll come out maybe in 15 months that it'll be under bad head i think yeah so all new material it, yeah it's all all stuff that was intended to be released too it wasn't like cutting room floor stuff you know yeah um there were like because there were a few you know songs were recorded that were supposed to be released as you know parts of singles and stuff right. that for whatever reason didn't come out yeah everything actually that's on this was going to be on Some a label thing. that went under yeah like something was going to be on rough, rough trade, trade and it went under and then our friends jazz label that went under Maybe we can somehow fit that into the theme yeah. of this record. Call the record bankruptcy. Bank. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you very much. I won't keep you any longer. Okay. Right. Okay, we're going to do one more song, and we just worked this up today, so if it doesn't sound good, it's not our fault. This is for that little fuck face in Ma's mouse.